Hello, this is Kartik. So today I'm going to start. This is my first video lecture. That is, I'm going to start from simple hard body motion. So before that, I'm going to give you some ideas about the periodic motion. So when can you say that a body is in periodic motion? Very simple. If the motion of the body repeats for every regular interval of time, then you can say that the body is in periodic motion. Okay, very nice. Can you give me examples? Why not? See, I'm here, up from this side to that side. See, I'm very uniformly walking. Isn't this a periodic motion? Don't you think that this is a periodic motion? Yes, the motion of the body repeats for every interval of time. Yes, heartbeat, breathing. If you are very, very, very particular about your time, the morning, at 4 o'clock you wake up, every day 4 o'clock and there is going to be any periodic motion. The breakfast you take, the shower, the classes, lunch, sleeping, all these are a sort of periodic motion. The vibration of atoms, the vibration of air molecules which produces sound, again a periodic motion. So I got some example over here. This is very simple. It's not going to be a big deal for you. It's a meter scale. I'm not going to measure any length over here. Just I'm going to keep this fixed and another end I'm going to make it wide out. Now I'm going to show you that whatever the vibration produces over here is going to be periodic. This is periodic. I got another example over here. Got some juice. Because I'm tired, I'm going to have some juice. See, we can observe when I drink this juice, you can have. You can feel that periodic motion, you can see my throat. So there will not be a streamline, there will not be a continuous flow of a juice. There will be a discontinuity. So there will, I will have to give a break. See, look at my throat. Is that this periodic motion? So like this, you can give an enormous number of examples in nature for periodic motion. However, so this are whatever I am going to discuss today, it comes under oscillatory motion, which is again a periodic motion. So what is this oscillatory motion? So it's a special case of periodic motion and what will be here is, there will be a front and back motion. So there will be a equilibrium position or a mean position. So with respect to that mean position, there will be a front and back motion. So that oscillation is called an oscillatory motion. Now, when can we say that? So, what are the examples for oscillatory motion? However, no problem. There are so many. Uh, vibration of atoms. I got a beautiful example over there. So, let me show you something. So, this is called a simple pendulum. Very, very familiar, very, very, very simple as well. One end is fixed, another end is fixed with a pole. I'm going to make it vibrate, oscillate. So, this is going to be an oscillatory motion. See, there will be mean position. It was a press. So I made it to oscillate and now it is in oscillation. Front and back. Another, another example I got is a spring up and down. There will be a mean position. With respect to that mean position, there will be up and down motion, front and back motion. Now, when can you say that a body is in simple harmonic motion, is executing simple harmonic motion? So there should be two conditions. Remember. However, the first condition is it's a periodic, no matter. I don't have to worry much about it. But the very main important thing here is the restoring force is always directed towards main position. The second condition is the restoring force is directly proportional to this force. One of the simplest examples for the same section is simple pendulum. Very, very beautiful, simplest example. So it's something very similar here, the same diagram I've written over here. So this is mean position. I have to make this guy to oscillate. Uh, there will be front and back motion. So this is going to be extreme position. However, there is a restoring 
force acting on this spot, which is always directly proportional to the displacement, more restoring force I get, more displacement also I'm getting. And however, another one is the restoring force or acceleration is always directed towards the mean position. So these two conditions, if these two conditions do obey, then I can say that the motion is called simple harmonic motion. Very nice. So far so good. However, so what can be done for the displacement? What can be done for the velocity, acceleration, or what is the kinetic energy, what is the potential energy, what is the total energy? All these informations I have to get. How? The displacement function. One of the key answers is the displacement function. So I have to represent the displacement function for the simple harmonic motion. This is my job. So that if I differentiate displacement with respect to time, I will get velocity and hence others. Now what, how, how can I get the displacement function? Very simple. So this condition I am going to make use. So that is restoring force is directly proportional to displacement. And remember, the restoring force is always opposite to the displacement, even though it is directly proportional. So restoring force will be acting like this. And the displacement always is measured from the mean position. So this is the way that you uh, measure the displacement. That's why it is always direct, you know, directly proportional and even uh, opposite. So that's why I have to put negative somewhere. Now I have to replace this guy, that is proportionality. I will replace f is equal to some constant k into x. I don't want to forget this guy, minus. And I'm going to bring this guy here, f plus k, x is equal to zero. This is force. So restoring force, k is the value, this k is called force constant. So if you are talking about spin, I will name it very differently, that is spin constant. So this force leads to an acceleration, that acceleration m into a, so force is m into a, plus k x is equal to c. So I'm going to divide yam and process. I'm going to give some little massage. So this a plus k by yam yam is equal to zero. Just divide it on both sides. And what is this acceleration thing? I can write in terms of displacement. There is b square yam by b t square. This is nothing but second derivative of displacement, which is acceleration plus k by yam yam is equal to zero. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this guy as some constant, which is omega square. So d square yax by d t square. So I'm going to take this as plus omega square. This omega square yax is equal to zero, where omega is equal to square root of k by jump. Do you know what is this k? Spring or force constant. You know what is this young? Mass of the simple harmonic oscillator. So this omega is called angular frequency. So that is an effective factor 2 pi with the linear frequency f. So this is angular frequency omega which is a constant which is 2 pi times the linear frequency. Now my, I have to define what is this linear frequency by the way. Now, the linear frequency f is defined as 1 by time period t. So now I have to define what is time period Before that, the linear frequency is defined as the number of oscillations per second. You count how many number of oscillations per second, that will be the frequency and which is reciprocal of the time period which is measured in hertz. So what is this time period? So this time period is time taken for one oscillation. For example, here I have got simple pendulum. It's the same example I'm going to do. So that the mean position, extreme position. So I have to measure what is time taken from the mean position, extreme, mean, extreme, again coming to the mean. From full one oscillation, what is the time taken? That I have to measure. That is called the time period. However, this is a second order differential equation. If I solve this differential equation, I will get a solution for this guy. That is the x, uh, which is function of time that is a displacement, is equal to a cos omega t. 
What is this prayer? I'll put you here. What is this A? I'll put you here. So this A is called amplitude of is called amplitude of a simple harmonic oscillator. So that which is defined as the maximum displacement from the mean position to the extreme position. You measure what is the maximum displacement from the mean position to the extreme position. So here I got simple pendulum, as I told you many times. So from the minimum mean, from the middle position, that is equilibrium position, measure the maximum displacement. That is going to be an amplitude. So this is a displacement function of is going to be displacement function. So I represent in terms of sine function. It doesn't matter I can express in terms of cos function, also the combination of sine and cos. It doesn't, it does have to be only periodic. And I cannot uh, express this guy in terms of exponential or logarithm function because they are not periodic functions. Now, however, so how, what sort of graph I can expect for the displacement function? So I'm going to draw time, I'm going to take time along x axis and displacement along y axis. Now this displacement function contains a periodic function, which is a sine function. So this sine function can take maximum value that is plus 1, minimum value is minus 1. So that means the displacement switches from A to minus A to A minus A to A minus A. It's very nice. So however, I'm going to make use so of this diagram, which is a simple pendulum, and I'm going to interpret what it is so. So this is mean position, x is equal to 0. And I'm going to stop my clock exactly when the box starts from the mean position. So I'm going to start clock here. So whenever I start, I start clock, the displacement is equal to 0 because I measure displacement from the mean position. So that's why I'm coming here. So I'm going to have different time intervals. So time period is from the mean position to the extreme position, again coming to the mean position, going to the another extreme position, coming to the mean position. So time period will be divided into four. I mean one is zero, that is first I start from the middle, that is equal to position, then one by fourth of the time period, then half of the time period, then three, three by four, three by fourth of time period and full complete time period. So time taken for the bob to move from the main position to extreme position is going to be one fourth of the time period. So uh, after going here, it measures the displacement that is going to be A, which is maximum displacement from the main position. So I'm going to divide the time, that is 0, then T by 4, then T by 2, then 3T by 4, and full oscillation that is T. So it comes here, the displacement is A. So I let me say this is A, so here I'm going to mark. Again comes the mean position, that is half of the time period, and the displacement is equal to t by 2. I'm sorry, the displacement is equal to 0. And it goes to again another extreme position, that is another side. And the dis maximum displacement is minus a. So I'm going to have minus a in another axis. So we'll be over here. And again it comes to the mean position. And I measure the displacement that is equal to 0. So it is here. So one point, second. What sort of curve I can expect? Is it a straight line? No. Because see, this guy here, sine function is a sinusoidal wave, and I have to draw a sine function curve. This is how the displacement works. So it's a sinusoidal wave. So the displacement varies from plus a to minus. Okay, that's fine. So what about the velocity? At the, at the main position, I got to know that the displacement is zero. Extreme position, maximum displacement, that is nothing but amplitude. So what can I expect for the velocity? So I'm going to find a velocity in very simple ways to differentiate the displacement function with respect to time. I will get velocity, which is a function of time. So d by dt of x of t. That is differentiating the displacement function, which is d by dt of x of t is here. A sine omega t. A is amplitude, maximum displacement. It's a constant. 
चलवत टेक्स ए आउटसाइड दैट्स व्हाई बिकॉज इट्स अ कांस्टेंट चलो डिफरेंस इज साइन में लगा दी आई नो दिस ओमेगा कॉस ओमेगा टी आप टेक दिस ओमेगा आउटसाइड एंड डिफरेंस विद द रेस्ट दैट इज कॉस ओमेगा That's fine. The velocity is function of time, which is again a periodic function. It is in terms of cos function. I'm going to get graphic. But however, so I'm going to write this cos function in terms of this sine function. That is, and actually, I want to write this velocity in terms of this function. So to make that, I'm I have the relation sine square omega t plus cos square omega t is equal to one, and this cos omega t. Is equal to one minus sine square omega t, and yeah, the square root of this step, square root one minus sine square omega t. I'm going to substitute here. Velocity is a function of time. A omega cos omega t is nothing but square root of one minus sine square omega t. I can take this guy A instead of the square root. Velocity is a function of time. Omega square root of A square minus A square sine square omega t. P of t is a function of time, etc. I am actually uh, writing for velocity. So omega square root of A square. This is nothing but x yes, square. It's a function of time. So I got velocity is also a function of time, which is also which also varies period. However, I'm going to find out what is the velocity at the mean position. What is the velocity at the extreme position? These are my uh, now. Uh, these are my tasks. So what I'm going to do is at mean position. At mean position, what is the displacement? Displacement is equal to zero. So velocity, which is a function of time, is equal to omega square root of a square minus zero. Plus omega t at extreme position. At extreme position. So I'm I'm actually here. The displacement x is absolutely equal to the amplitude, which is a maximum displacement, and the velocity, which is a function of time, omega square root of a square, and x is equal to a square, is equal to c. And it you know it was similar for this extreme position also. That means velocity at the mean position is going to be omega, which is a maximum value, and velocity at the extreme position is going to be minimum value, which is nothing but zero. Very very true. If I have simple pendulum, I have that simple pendulum, and this is ah, that's why I'm going to make it awesome. So the extreme position you can see, you know, it stops for some time. That's where the velocity is equal to zero, and mean position it will be having the maximum velocity. Now, what sort of graph I can expect? The same way. So I can have graph along x-axis time and along y-axis velocity, which is a function of time. So this is zero. I start the clock from the mean position t. And this is one fourth of time period, half of the time period, three by fourth of time period, and it is full time period. So I start from here, going to another one extreme and coming to the mean position, going to another extreme position again, coming to the mean position, and I got a full time period. So velocity is a function of time. So now at zero, I can when I start the clock. So the bob is at middle, that is equilibrium position, and velocity is maximum. I got here at the equilibrium position or mean position, velocity is maximum omega a. So maximum velocity, maybe this way, is omega a. And when it goes to the extreme position, it takes one fourth of time period, and the velocity is minimum, that is nothing but zero. Comes to zero. And it goes to another extreme. I'm sorry. It goes to mean position again. Velocity is again maximum. Another direction. So that's why that is minus omega. Okay. Again, it goes to a 
the string position, velocity is equal to zero. Again, it goes to mean position with a maximum velocity omega a. So, don't you think that we are getting a sign? I'm sorry, that is possible. This is nothing possible. The maximum value of cos here it is omega a, and this is again a sinusoidal wave, which is a periodic function. Now, what about acceleration? So, acceleration I can easily get by differentiating velocity with a function of time. So, I got here a velocity which is a function of time, which is d by d of a omega cos omega t. Again, this a omega a constant, and we will take outside, differentiate cos omega t omega outside minus sine omega t. This omega square minus a omega square sine omega t. I will take this a here, no problem, minus omega square, a sine omega t is nothing but the displacement function, x which is a function of time. This is another acceleration which is a function of time. That's very nice. You know, I told you the second condition for simple number of motion, what is that? Acceleration of the restoring force is always directly or directly proportional to the displacement. Isn't this the same thing? Yes, it is. And uh, what sort of graph you can expect for the acceleration? So similarly, you see, this is displacement, sine function, I got a sine function. This is velocity, cross function, I got a cross function. And I, again I got acceleration by differentiating velocity. This time I got sine function. So I expect the acceleration to be a sine of wave. That is a sine function graph. So again in the same way I'm going to write, this is time. This is acceleration, which is a function of time. Starting a clock here, mean position, t is equal to 0, t by 4, t by 2, 3t by 4, and the full time period t. At equilibrium position, that is mean position, x is equal to 0, acceleration is equal to mark 0, because x is equal to 0. And at extreme position, x is equal to a, that is nothing but the maximum displacement, that is amplitude. And acceleration is equal to minus omega square, this x is equal to a, here it is. So I got maximum acceleration when the ball is at extreme position, and the zero acceleration when the ball is at mean position. So what sort of form I can expect? Again, a sinus for the wave, but it starts from negative side because I've got a negative sign of the field. So I'm going to start from that. It's an acceleration curve. We discussed displacement, we got the graph, velocity, and again acceleration. Now what will be the kinetic energy? What will be the potential energy? What will be the total energy of simple harmonic oscillator? So, however, it's very easy to get the kinetic energy because I already got velocity. Uh, kinetic energy of the simple harmonic oscillator, half mass of the oscillator, and square of the velocity. I know what is V. No? V is velocity function for simple harmonic oscillator. Mass velocity is A omega cos omega t. Square. This is velocity function. I already did it. Uh, this is square. I have to square it. Half yum a square omega square cos square omega t. Half yum omega square. This cos square omega t is 1 minus sine square omega t. 1 minus sine square omega t. I'm going to take this a square inside, a square, and again here also, a square. So this kinetic energy, is again a function of time, the kinetic energy changes with time, half young omega square, a square, a sine omega t is nothing but displacement function, x square, that is the x square is a function of time. Very nice, you know? x is a displacement which varies with the time. As changes with time, kinetic energy has to change with time. How it does change, I'm not telling you. So at equilibrium position, that is at 
mean position, x is equal to 0, kinetic energy is equal to half young omega squared a squared. This x is equal to 0. That's the maximum value of kinetic energy. So at extreme position, x is equal to a, that is nothing but the maximum displacement a, and kinetic energy is equal to here it is. This is going to be a, a square, a square minus a square zero, kinetic energy is equal to c. Very intuitive. Why to do that? At the extreme position, the velocity of the simple harmonic oscillator becomes zero, and at the mean position, it is maximum. And kinetic energy is equal to half young v square. It is directly proportional to velocity. If the velocity is maximum at the mean position, kinetic energy has to be maximum, and it is here. And the velocity at the extreme position is zero, kinetic energy has to be equal to zero. That's great. Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to name this guy equation number one. And now I'm going to find what is the potential energy of the simple harmonic oscillator. And after that, I'm going to add the potential energy and kinetic energy to get the mechanical energy of the simple harmonic oscillator. And that total energy, I will prove that the total energy of the simple harmonic oscillator remains constant if there is no damping or if there is no decreasing amplitude. So well, how do you find the potential? Remember, usually there is a beautiful method to find the potential energy. If the force is conservative, what is conservative force? The work done by that force is independent of the path, then that force is called conservative. If the work done is uh, independent of the path, then all it depends on the initial and final stage or final point, then you can say that the force is conservative. If the force is conservative, then whatever the work done by that force is actually equal to the potential. And it's the same concept we're going to use because the force involved here is conservative force. So I would like to calculate what is the work done and I'm going to equate work done is exactly as a potential energy because force is conservative. So now my business is to find out what is work done by the force or by the restoring force. Then I will equate to the potential energy. So for that, I'm going to take a very small part. Then we have small displacement dx. And for the crest, for this small displacement dx, I'm going to find out how much work is done. That is going to be very, very small. The dw is small work done corresponding to the small displacement dx. You know the definition of work, force. And I want to use this dot. I cannot mis mis misuse my language. This is dot product of force and displacement. Not in into displacement. You know it. Force dot displacement. So it is equal to magnitude of force, magnitude of displacement, cos theta. Remember, theta is angle between force and the displacement. It is 180 degree anti parallel. So the angle between force and displacement is 180 degree. So cos 180 is minus 1. So you get small work when dw is equal to minus f dx. Cos 180 is minus 1. I call it minus 1 here. So this is small work done corresponding to the small displacement dx. But I want to find what is the total work done. Very easy value. That is to make use of integration constant. If you want to find what is the total work done, you have to integrate or you have to add up the small work done d w, which implies integration of minus f dx. What is this left? There's a restoring force. What do we have from this restoring force? We have acceleration. So I'm going to write this acceleration the force in terms of acceleration young a b x, which is equal to total work. So the total work done w is equal to minus m, which is mass. I have constant total problem here. Integration of this acceleration of the simple harmonic oscillator minus omega square x and this dx. And again this omega square is a frequency, it's a constant minus, minus, minus d 
He said to and I got the apple omega square left on the integration of x b x. You know it's a very simple integral, yum omega square, yax square by is a very simple integral. So I told you the force is conservative. So what does it mean? I know I can say that whatever the work done by the restoring force is exactly equal to the potential energy. So that's why work is equal to potential energy because force is conservative. And this work is equal to yum omega square, yax square by 2. Okay, I'm very, I'm very happy because we got a potential energy which is a function of displacement. And here I got a potential kinetic energy which is a function of uh, displacement again. I'm going to uh, name this as equation number 2. So I'm going to write here total energy of simple harmonic. That is a mechanical energy, uh, which is sum of potential energy and kinetic energy. So I got equation number one and two. I want to add them up to get the total mechanical energy. Very easy business. So total energy is equal to so half the omega square, half the omega square, common. Well, right here, half young omega square, and this is y square minus x square plus x square, x square, x square cancel each other, and I left with a square. I told you the force involved here is conservative, that's why I equated potential energy is exactly equal to the work done, and I added potential energy in kinetically equal to the total energy. Now, I got to tell you something. Since a force is conservative, the mechanical energy should be constant. There should not be any change in mechanical energy with respect to time. Remember, here potential energy, which is a function of time, also changes with the displacement because displacement changes with the time. Remember, kinetic energy also is a function of time, it changes. No matter, but the total energy of the simple harmonic oscillator remains constant. I will tell you how. See, this is mass, no problem, this is a constant. Omega, angular frequency, is again a constant. Amplitude, if there is no damping, it's again a constant. There is, like, you know, a conservative force. Uh, if you have conservative force, there won't be have any loss of energy. Uh, that's why there is no damping. There's, that's why it's again a constant. So, so the total energy remains constant. So no matter, kinetic energy changes. No matter, I don't bother when potential energy changes with the time. Of course, they have to change. But the total energy of the simple harmonic oscillator remains constant. And it is directly proportional to amplitude and the frequency of the oscillator. That's fine. Now, now what's the graphic in this one? See, I'm going to represent whatever I have discussed so far, I'm going to represent very simply uh, in terms of graph. See. So this is going to be the displacement function, that's fine, and velocity function is a cost function, no, okay. and acceleration is again the same, and we start from the left, you know, negative side, and what sort of graph we can expect for the total energy, so I'm going to write in terms of two axes, uh, this is uh, y axis where I can represent energy and this is x axis where I can represent the displacement of the simple harmonic oscillator. So this is one side plus a and this is another side minus a. So kinetic energy curve which is a function of time so this young omega square a is called the constant so this is inverted parabola so because you know kinetic energy is directly proportional square for displacement it is inverted parabola so I can expect a curve like this for the kinetic energy this is the curve for the kinetic energy a potential energy is over here young omega square x square which is directly proportional to x square that is again a parabola like this Sorry, it should be parabola. What it does tell me? What it 
this is the time. This is going to be the total energy. Any value. Any value you can calculate the total energy. And you tell so whatever I put, whatever I discuss makes us understand that the total energy of a simple harmonic oscillator is constant. So remember here, mean position, zero potential energy, but kinetic energy is maximum. Even the zero potential energy, kinetic energy is maximum, total energy is called potential energy plus kinetic energy. Kinetic energy maximum, what then? I mean, uh, total energy remains constant. So, whatever the point, wherever you calculate the total energy of the system, it remains constant. Thanks for watching. I'm going to discuss about simple pendulum in the next lecture. Thanks a lot.